Hey everyone, happy Friday, it's Sean, and today I wanna to talk to you about long-term care. I've actually something I've experienced firsthand, and the importance of long-term care is, I can't stress it enough. So essentially, 70% of Americans are at some point in their life gonna need long-term care, and not being prepared for it, whatever the case that may be, can be devastating to you and to your family. It's really something that for the most part, people don't really talk about or think about. They just kind of want to hope that, well, I'm in the other 30% that'll never need this. But think about it, 70% of people will. And what if you're one of those? What would you do at that point? You know, plan for it now before it's too late. So there are multiple things to do when you think about that. Not just simply thinking about the financial burden, but on the physical burden and emotional burden on the people around you. How is that gonna be taken care of? Who's gonna be able to take care of it? So we're gonna go through some of that real quickly and I'm gonna share a presentation that I gave last week. So what are the consequences around long-term care if you don't plan? Well, you're gonna get the care you need, but it might not be in the way or the manner in which you were hoping to get the care. So that's really the key. So what you wanna determine is first, who's your team? Who are you gonna have around you? Who's going to be able to help you carry out the wishes that you want and make sure that you're taken care of. If you think about your family, whether it be children, spouse, whatever it might be, who is going to be there? Do they know that or is that just your thought process? Do you want to put a burden on them? Could it be that your family moves somewhere or they can't live their life and do the things that they would want to do because they put their life on hold taking care of you? How would that make you feel? The other thing that happens a lot of times is within families, the care that's provided isn't necessarily equal. So that causes tension within the families. So it might be brothers and sisters, husbands and wives fighting over, I want to provide the best care for my parent or I don't, and I'm giving more than you're giving and so on. So you don't want to create that rift as well. What you want to be is the manager of that care or have that managed. You don't want someone in your family to be having to physically carry out all these activities that are required for you. You want them to basically be guiding and supervising the pro proper professionals to the extent that you can. So where do you start? You want to look at who is your team? Who is going to be there for you? Who's going to help you manage this care? And is it a nephew or niece? Is it your children? Who is it that's going to be a part of your team? And maybe it isn't every everybody. Maybe it's a grandchild, but maybe your grandson will take care of you two days a week and your child will take care of you the other two days a week or you know what does that look like what would it look like if you need to be in a particular facility what would it look like getting care at home so you want to know the where what and how then you want to talk about funding you want to think about funding is it going to be using your assets that you're going to sell spend down whether it be 401ks iras other retirement savings is it going to be selling your home is it going to be some kind of long-term care insurance. All these are viable ways to take care of this, but not planning and not knowing whether or not you're prepared for this can be devastating. A common misconception is that Medicare pays for it, and the answer is they do not. They will pay for rehab, but they will not pay for hospice or home care, um, or they might pay for some hospice, but it's not gonna be a 24 seven. It's potentially not going to be something where you're gonna have someone to take care of you all the time. Also, Medicaid does provide care. However, you have to spend down a majority of your assets, a bulk of your assets to qualify for that. And often if it's a husband and wife or you know, somebody else that you're planning to leave that money to in legacy planning, you're spending down all those assets and you're leaving nothing. So if that's something that's in your plan is to leave money to other people, you might wanna consider the impact of planning for long-term care. And there's obviously different places. There's nursing homes, there's being at home, there's assisted living facilities, a lot of options. And sometimes it's not just a matter of you choosing which one's which, but it's where your conditions or your situation puts you in. So be prepared for all of those. Now let's talk a little bit about funding that care. There's self-funding, which obviously means spending your assets. So maybe you've saved enough that you're able to do that. But for example, what happens if you save $1.5 million and 20% of the 70% of people that need long-term care will need it for five years or more. So even if it's $200,000 a year, 
$150,000 a year of care that you need for five years, you're talking about a million dollars potentially. So if you save $1.5 million and you have to spend a million dollars of your own money, you're leaving your loved ones with only $500,000 out of the 1.5 million you had and, and may have hoped to pass on to them. Also, there are the tax ramifications of using your assets. So if you're selling property, you may have capital gains. If you're using 401k IRA money, there might be taxes associated with that. You may have held off on taking that money out, but now you don't have a choice. You actually have to do that. Then as I mentioned, Medicaid has asset restrictions. So if you have above a certain amount of money, you have to spend that money down until you're at the maximum amount that they allow in order for you to qualify. There's also a limitation to the services that they provide and it may not be exactly what you're looking for. So we talked about asset-based spending your money. Then there's a long-term care insurance and long-term care planning that you can put together, which our team can help you with. And then there's a hybrid between the two. So you can kind of set a plan up to where I am comfortable spending this amount of my assets, or I'd like something in place that would cover $3,000, $4,000 a month. And if it costs five, $6,000 a month, I can pay the other 2,000. So you have that blending of the two to create a plan that works for you. And then you want to ask yourself, what legacy do you want to leave? Determine what your goals are. Make sure again, planning is key. Planning is the most important thing to talk about and get to that. So if you're above 40, this is the time that you should start thinking about long-term care. Um, if you're in a situation where you're dealing with a parent that might be in this situation right now, this is gonna be all the more to make you say, hey, I need to get a plan together. Come have a conversation with myself and or my colleagues and we'll help you guide you along this path. We'll share with you the things that you should be thinking about, what will work, based on what you're looking to accomplish and your wishes and needs. So by all means, my contact information is below if you'd like to have a conversation. I also have a long-term care planning guide I'd be happy to send you for free. So if you want that, contact me via my email and I'd be happy to just send that to you, no obligation whatsoever. So thank you for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one.